Good day. I'm Father Jim Wallace, Redemptorist, speaking to you from Holy Redeemer Provincial Residence in Washington, D.C. Welcome to my pastoral reflection for the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us begin with a prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. This Sunday's Gospel is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known in Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now, I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, John the Baptist not only plays an important role in the life of Jesus, but he also continues to play an important role in the life of the church, in our lives, as a community of faith and as individuals. His role in the life of Jesus is stated clearly in the prologue of John's Gospel, the opening verses. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to testify to the light. The light who enlightens everyone was coming into the world. Now John the Baptist appears in all four Gospels as the man who testifies, who witnesses, who points to Jesus as the one the people have been waiting for. Most of the time, whenever I think of John the Baptist, I picture him out in the desert, calling people to prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, calling anyone who would listen, the religious leaders, soldiers, tax collectors, calling them to repent inviting them to undergo a baptism of water as a sign of repentance. But here in today's gospel, he introduces Jesus to us in three bold statements. He begins with the word, behold, a very important word in scripture. Behold, look, look beyond the surface, listen, be attentive, behold. That's his first statement. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is God's Lamb, sent by God to take away the sin of the world. Now, this is not just bringing forgiveness of our personal sins, but as theologian John Shea points out, sin is the fundamental alienation of God from creation. The connection with God had been broken and continues to be broken at times. Jesus came and continues to come. Jesus was sent to bridge this separation, to take away the sin of the world. He was sent to be the way to God, leading to life. How? This leads to our second statement that John the Baptist makes. He says again that he himself came baptizing with water to prepare the way to testify to Jesus that he might be made known to Israel. And when he was baptizing Jesus, 
he tells us he saw the Spirit come down upon him and remain upon him. And at that very moment, John heard a voice say, this one upon whom the Spirit comes down and remains, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one in whom and through whom the Holy Spirit comes by baptism. Which brings John to his third great statement found in all four Gospels. Jesus is the Son of God. This story of John leading others to Jesus is not only history, but it's also something that happens to us today when we gather to worship God through the Son in the Holy Spirit. A relationship with the Trinity given to us at baptism and renewed, deepened, when we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. John the Baptist comes to us at the very beginning of the liturgical year, at the church's New Year season called Advent. He calls us then to repent, to draw closer to Jesus. But this year, he also comes to us at the beginning of what's called ordinary time. That's what we heard today. The word ordinary here is re rooted in the Latin word ordo, which means numbered time. Ordinary time is the time between the Advent Christmas cycles and the Lent Easter cycle. And then after the Easter season for the rest of the year. But ordinary does not mean routine time or nothing special time as opposed to extraordinary time. Numbered time reminds us that our days are numbered, but it's also a reminder that all time is graced time. Paul says in one of his letters, now is the acceptable time. Now is the hour of salvation. Now is the time to enter more deeply this new year into our relationship with Jesus. To know Jesus as the Lamb of God, whom we call on before we receive the Eucharist at every Mass, the one who in communion with the Father gives us the Holy Spirit at every Eucharist to transform bread and wine, and in our eating it, who transforms us again and again and again. To know Jesus, as the Son of God. And it is to know him also in his role as the servant of God. In our first reading today, Isaiah speaks of Jesus in that first reading, sent the servant, sent into the world to be light for the nations. Paul today in the reading reminds the Corinthians and us that we have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy. And at the end of the Mass, we're sent forth as servants, just as Jesus at the Last Supper in John's Gospel washes their feet and tells them to do as he has done, to serve others in the world. So, can we make our prayer this new year the words we said today after the first reading? Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Let us conclude with a prayer. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and in heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we thank you for joining the Redemptorist online preaching, and we hope you will join us again next Wednesday, January 18th. Father Francis Gargani will be preaching. Have a good week, and thank you for listening.